Explore the bizarre. bizarre. Your e-ticket ride into the world of the paranormal. Strap yourself in as we traverse the universe exploring the unexplained. UFOs, 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 ghosts, ghosts lost, worlds, lost worlds, cryptozoology, cryptozoology as well as other dimensions. dimensions. It's time to take back the night. Back the night. Back. Now, your electrifying hosts of Exploring the Bazaar, Timothy Beckley and Tim Swartz. Oh my god, I'm getting dizzy. If Tardy keeps spinning around like this, I'm going to get a nosebleed if I don't have one already. So you think you're a tough guy, huh? Well, I'm the toughest one here, in and out of the ring. Ah, oh, God, no, not another body slam. Oh my God, where's Hulk Hogan when you need him? Need him you know, the most? I guess he's suing. You don't I need guess Hogan. Uh, I'm, uh, I guess he's suing, suing somebody now. Anyway, last time I played the heel. Oh my God. Ah, ah. I guess I could start. Ah, I guess I could start the. Uh, oh, not another body slam. Oh. All right. Let's get. That should let's teach get you to keep your big mouth shut when you're dealing with the champ. Ah. Uh, I, I've learned my place, Tati Vic. I've learned my place. Oh, I've been waiting for this uh, uh, show for gosh knows uh, how long. It's actually a, <laughs> a, a, a tribute show. A tribute show to my dear friend, the late Vivian St. John. Yeah. Uh, who I actually knew uh, as uh, Lady Suzanne Miller uh, in 1970. I had organized a metaphysical group here in New York, the New York School of Occult Arts and Sciences. We had lectures and seminars and workshops and sold books and Ouija boards and things along that uh, line. And uh, we uh, advertised in local paper, uh, mainly the Village Voice, which uh, catered to a, a Lower East Side a clientele and, and village people and young adults and so forth. <clears throat> One day, this rather tall, strikingly uh, attractive young lady uh, strolled up the uh, the stairs to the second floor and sat down. We had a uh, conversation. Uh, she enters, introduced herself as Suzanne and uh, gave me a little bit about her background. We got to know uh, each other. Uh, she hailed from uh, Cincinnati and had gotten off the bus, I guess maybe a month or so earlier at the Port Authority, and was wandering around the city trying to find her place, I guess, in uh, in life. In because world. at that point, she would have been, um, I guess, about uh, 20 years old or so. Wow. Uh, anyway, I invited her in, and she told me that she had uh, been a practicing psychic for a while and had become adapt at the, the Ouija board. So now, uh, over the course of the next uh, year or so, we experimented with the Ouija board and we did some uh, other psychic work together. And eventually she became a, a counselor and a reader at my metaphysical uh, Fascinating. studio. Yeah, yeah, studio. And um, any, anyway, we kept in touch, but then she kind of disappeared from my life um, for a uh, uh, for a number of years, and when she uh, reemerged, uh, she was a couple of uh, uh, inches taller. She was six <laughs> foot one when I uh, when I first met her, but yeah. with her wrestling boots on, you could add a couple of inches. Uh, sure, sure. To, to that, yeah, yeah. She she loved she loved her wrestling uh, 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 boots, and yeah. uh, in fact, I wonder where they might even be uh, uh, today. Anyway, she told me all about her career and her travels around the world. And, and we had the opportunity to do some uh, traveling and, and got back together again and, and stayed in touch uh, on and off until she uh, passed away in uh, December of 2013. Yes. So tonight we are having a show that is combining as much as we possibly can uh, wrestling, the world of wrestling, which I've always been uh, fascinated uh, by. If I was a little bit more athletic, I might be on the top <laughs> rope now, but as it is, I'm uh, like one of the bad managers. I'm slinking away to the dressing room uh, before I get uh, beat up. 
Uh, anyway, uh, instead instead of uh, sitting here and spending a lot of time introducing our guests, I'm going to have them tell us a little bit about their history and background and their interest in the paranormal. And our first guest tonight, we're going to do a go round robin as we usually uh, do. Uh, the first part of the show, we're going to have on Tatevik, and I'm sure I'm mispronouncing Tatevik. that again. <laughs> Tatevik. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. And, uh, it happens all the time. Okay. All right. Well, let me let me ask you. How first of all, how did you meet Vivian? And uh, I guess there was a mutual interest there in the uh, in the paranormal between the uh, the two of you. Yeah, there must have been uh, because there was an instant connection when we actually did meet, um, and it was in the summer of 2013, actually the year of when she passed um i was traveling it was my very first time out of the west coast traveling to the east coast um traveling with my manager and uh, another lady wrestler leilani kai who was a friend a longtime friend of of vivian's um and yeah. that's how i ultimately got introduced to vivian was through leilani kai and we actually ended up staying in her home for quite some time um not too long but about yes. two weeks um did, did she have the uh, did she have the uh, still have the same for uh the uh when she had uh doberman pinchers the what i'm the sorry big dogs the the, the dogs big, the big black no. dogs no 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 she didn't have oh. dogs she had two cats she well boy cats. you missed it because she had some pretty uh heavyweight uh dobermans Really? And I remember one time I opened, yeah, I opened the kitchen, uh, the refrigerator door, and they went after me, uh, growling and uh, wow. snapping, uh, because I guess they uh, they thought I was going after their food or something like that, and they were going to have me for dinner instead <laughs> of the regular uh, tidbits. But uh, oh yeah, yeah, she had three uh, uh, three big black Dobermans, and uh, well, they were companions for many years. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know what happened to the Dobermans, but let's hope that they're they're out there somewhere. But okay, yeah. so go ahead. Sorry to interrupt you. Continue. Um, yeah, but so the minute that I walked into her home, there was an instant connection. Like it was, it was a, it was a type of energy or a vibration that I'd never felt before, and I instantly made a connection to it. And I think vice versa, she did as well. One of the first things that Vivian told me was, "I knew you were coming. I knew you were on your way." You know, and it was like, you know, she was, uh, she had, she had known that I was going to arrive, you know, way before, um, the moment that I did show up to the home. Mm -hmm. She was, uh, we have some, we have, yeah, yeah. We have some rustling noise. Keep it down in the background there before I have to slam you all to the mat. <laughs> <laughs> that's <Go>. right. <laughs> that, that's right. Everybody behave there. Uh, go, go ahead. Continue. <laughs> Um, it was just, you know, it, it was very, very different. It was a very different experience for me. It was a different kind of place to begin with, especially for my very first time traveling outside of California. Um, and, you know, um, Vivian didn't like a lot of women. So I heard at least that she didn't connect with a lot of women. So when she connected with me, you know, it was pretty cool, um, you know, to have that. And she was just she had such a warm heart and she was so giving. And I think that's one of the things that I really, um, that people didn't really know about her. And I don't know if you knew that about her, Tim, but she was extremely giving. I mean, it, it, it was as if, you know, I was, uh, I was at my home away from yeah. home. Well, yet, you know, yet, you know, people accused her, if that's the word, a word of being a Satanist because yes. she did, she did dabble in, um, the dark arts. The mag well, the the magical arts. In fact, there is a uh, a rather famous photo of me uh, one night. I think we got a little buzzed, and she was a she was a great uh, artist when it came to doing like drawing symbols and talismans. I mean, yes, perfect circles. I, I yes. can't even do it if I had a, a a compass. And she decorated my. I think I had a um, pair of uh, speedos on or something, swim trunks, and she painted my entire body with all these talismans. Now. They meant something to her. I can't tell yeah. you exactly what they uh, they were. I, I think they were from the the lower king, uh, the lower key of Solomon, 
and and if people are familiar with the work of like Aleister Crowley, yeah. he used a lot of uh, uh, symbols and talismans, and of course mm-hmm. drew them on the floor, and you had to stay in the circle and the whole bit uh, there. So uh, we were involved in that, and uh, of course the the Ouija board uh, too. That was her her main tool outside of reading the um, uh, the tarot cards. Now I could do an hour on this, but basically one one day she was in our metaphysical center. And her husband, uh, Stanley, had had disappeared. Uh, he had mm-hmm. gone up to upstate New York, uh, uh, I don't know, to see some friends or something like that. And it was over the Labor Day weekend, and he was supposed to come back, uh, you know, before there was a traffic uh, buildup or anything. Well, he never showed. Right. So she got to be a little bit uh, uh, concerned. So she decided, let's take the. Um, Ouija board down from the uh, the shelf. We were selling him at the occult center there, and mm-hmm. and see if we could contact a spirit who would tell us where Stanley was. So we we put a little talcum powder on it and put our hands on the planchette and moved it around and asked it some uh, questions. And and basically the the spirit said that uh, Stanley had been in a uh, an automobile accident, accident, but not to worry worry that he was not seriously hurt mm-hmm. and that the accident was uh, in the town of uh, well i remember it spelled out tuxedo new york wow. well uh, uh, come monday or tuesday of the uh, of that uh, uh, week this was over the weekend where we did the experiment with the ouija board uh, i came uh, back to the occult center and stanley was there uh, a little bit uh, bruised if i remember and a couple of bandages on his uh, uh, forehead. And I said, Stanley, what happened to you? And he said, oh, I was driving near Tuxedo, New York, and uh, there was a, 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 an automobile accident on the side of the road, and I slowed down to see uh, you know, if I could help or see what was going on, rubbernecking, I think it's uh, called, and somebody, yeah. slammed into, somebody slammed into me, slammed into me, and I went into the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, steering wheel and the dashboard, and I went to the hospital overnight. Well, he wasn't badly hurt, but uh, the Ouija board predicted uh, what was going to happen. And it was a little bit more detailed than that because there were some other things sure. that came through, uh, yeah. other things that came through. Now, normally, I, it, Suzanne liked to, to do the Ouija board. She could sit there for hours. I found it a little bit uh, boring, but heck, uh, anything to to play Kate her because I enjoyed her uh, companionship, you know. And yeah. uh, 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 anyway, there were other things that came through as part of that the message. Uh, that uh, I've written up and people can read it because I'll post it uh, and, and all. Okay, so did you, you? Okay, she predicted that you would uh, 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 arrive. Now she yes. had already retired. She had already retired from wrestling, correct? Oh yes, yeah. She was uh, mm. when I met her. She was uh, actually bed bound, um, and she was hooked up to an oxygen tank. She was yes. very sick. Um, well, I, I knew she. I knew she was sick. Yeah. I had talked to her on the uh, on the phone several uh, times, and I just could not get down to uh, uh, to to see her. She had visited me. Well, we had gone on a couple of uh, uh, the cruises and trips, and uh, I guess she had come up to see me once for a couple of uh, couple of days over the holiday. But I tried to keep in touch. But she had her daughter, and she was doing her own uh, thing, and uh, uh, so uh, it, we didn't uh, communicate uh, that uh, uh, much. But I, I did know that she went to a couple of, uh, uh, like, wrestling meet and greets, you know, uh, meet the, the fans and stuff like that, and was busy selling, uh, you know, uh, uh, signing autographs and uh, and so yeah. forth. Did she ever do a reading for you? She actually didn't. She didn't do a reading, no, and I, I wish she did. Um, and I wish I actually had a picture with her. I, I don't know why I don't have a picture with her. Um but that was one of the things that crossed my mind earlier this this afternoon is I can't believe I don't have a picture with Vivian. Um, but no, she didn't do a reading with me to to answer your question again. Um, but, but she did right now. I remember you told me that she wrote out some magical description or something for you. She gave me a lot of her things and she gave me a lot of stones Um and she gave me that one contract that I showed you. Yes. That we never talked about. <laughs> Which is sitting right in front of me. And I still haven't figured it out. I haven't quite put my finger on it. But mm-hmm. um, 
it seems it's very old and it, it it seems to have meaning to her and for some reason it ended up with me they got well it it, it 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 might be written in a, a magical uh, language i know you showed it to me and i couldn't really um yeah. uh, 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 decipher it oh to get back to uh, suzanne or, or uh, vivian uh, being a, a satanist uh, she was not a satanist she but she I considered I no she considered that. herself a luciferian yes okay and if you uh, have uh, studied the bible which i don't claim to have uh, mm -hmm. but I, I do know for a fact uh, being in the occult and so forth that uh, lucifer was actually the bearer of of knowledge and light and and somehow uh, just like satan is probably a christian uh, invention uh, christianity turned uh, around a lot of things that were in the bible to their own um, uh, liking and yeah. Lucifer suddenly Lucifer suddenly became the bad guy. Uh, the fall the fall, fall guy yeah. yeah the heel yeah right <laughs> so <laughs> I, I guess when you I guess when you look at it you could say that parts of the Bible are like a wrestling match good Absolutely. good against evil you think you you think somebody thought of that when the uh, wrestling first started as a uh, uh, that form of entertainment oh it's a complete mockery. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the whole story. Uh, have you uh, have you uh, have you uh, like uh, studied at all the history of wrestling, or do you know about uh, Lou Gagne, Strangler Lewis, and uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I've I've studied it um, enough to know about the details and and what I need to know about it. Um, yeah. a, a, head, a head a headlock would a headlock if Strangler Lewis got you the headlock. It might last uh, all of a half an hour. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, in those days, in, in those days, it was, you know. Well, like I say, I've I've never been a uh, uh, an athlete, but I have known uh, actually a, a few wrestlers. Uh, Killer Kowalski, Walter Kowalski, yes. of course, who had his own uh, wrestling school up there in Massachusetts. He would call on the telephone and buy books for me. He was uh, very really? much interested, and in, yeah. He was very much interested in Nikola Tesla, and I remember one time he Good. bought a copy of our book on um, the Philadelphia Experiment, which intrigued him. Mm -hmm. and, wow. and and of course, and, and of course, the name Killer Kowalski was kind of you know he got that name because he jumped off the uh, the top rope and he severed the ear of another wrestler by by accident, and I think he always felt kind of bad uh, yeah. about that. But you know, the guy had like a cauliflower ear anyway; he was probably ready to. Uh, the, to come off uh, anyway i think that uh, and anyway i think it was yukon erickson but i might be wrong i always get the uh whoever the uh, the other guy uh, was i think both of them were pretty bad guys you know i don't <laughs> yeah but yeah. He, he was he was he was a character i watched him wrestle and went to see some of the matches when i was uh a pre-teenager then it turned out i actually got a job working for joe bonomo no, I don't know if you know who Joe Bonomo is, but Bonomo Turkish Taffy was named uh, after him. He was a strong man going back to about 1920. Wow. He would pull he would pull a railroad car with his teeth. Uh, you know, along along I'm sure a very lubricated track, but he he was the strong man of the day and so they named the Turkish Taffy uh, after him that you couldn't uh, uh, you know, pull apart that easy. And yeah. also, I I know uh, he's still active. The uh, mighty, uh, I believe it's Atlas. If you remember the comic books when you were a kid, they were kicking sand in some wimp's face, and he took some muscle, uh, you know, a course and became a a, a champion, a, a strong a man. And they still okay. have a mail order company, and the guy is a big fan of UFOs and listens to the show, as does Hercules. We actually have our own uh, straw man Hercules on the uh, on the air uh, here. But wow. uh, tell us, have you ever, have you ever had like a UFO sighting or a paranormal experience? <sighs> I mean, I, well, I, I I have a family member who says they did, actually, mm -hmm. um, and I got it. Do you know the name? Um, uh, the famous re uh, ufologist. I uh, forgot his name. I can't believe I, I can't remember it now, but I, I was in yes. contact with him. Uh, Roger Lear. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, John, uh, wait, Roger Lear was the, uh, uh, the the fellow who did the uh, 
uh, alien uh, uh, implant, implants. Implant. Doctor yes. Le- Doctor Lear. Doctor yeah, Doctor Lear. Lear. Yeah. Doctor Lear. Yes, yes, yes. He yes. passed away, I believe, in two thousand and. He he did indeed. 14, yes. Fourteen in March, um, if I'm not mistaken, maybe I am. Yeah. But I I got in contact with them uh, for actually a family member of mine who claims to be an abductee, and um, I met with him, and mm-hmm. he was a very interesting, very interesting man. Um, you know, it's 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 crazy because my grandmother told me that one time she had an encounter, um, in, actually in Armenia, and uh, and and the very first question that Dr. Ro- Roger Lear asked me was, "Has your grandmother had an encounter with the UFO?" And the answer was yes, and I just couldn't believe that he said that because my grandmother told me about the story when I was a little girl, and I didn't, you know, I didn't believe it for the longest time, um, but. You know, my uh, the, the, my family member actually um, had an encounter in 2001, and they said that um, they during this encounter uh, he was abducted and what uh, a, he w- a chip was implanted into his head, and so I mean it was insane. I didn't know what to make of it, um, and. It was very difficult because I was always in and out of believing him and not believing him. And when I told well, my we've story, got we've got we've got to get him on the show some night, the two of you. I would don't he, think would that's he talk possible. about it? <laughs> I uh, can speak for him. <laughs> I don't think that's <laughs> going to be a possibility. I would like to. It would be very interesting. Yeah. Um, but he was uh, later on, you know, diagnosed with um, with a mental illness and. Um, and that was kind of put to the side. The possibility of him being abducted was put to the side. And this was well before I, um, I yeah. spoke with uh, Roger Lear. Um, and, and he tried to meet with him and, and uh, find out, you know, if this was indeed a case of an actual um, encounter yes. or a case of a mental illness. Because yes. um, there, there's always that, that line of, you know, there, there's similarities well, it, between... It it is a it is a thin thin line indeed. Now yeah. you say he 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 did have an implant or said he had one. Yes, yes, he did. He did. But the the uh, doctor Lear never took an X ray or anything. Well, he he passed away before we can actually ah. get the X ray. So it was right at at that point of um, of getting him in. But it was, but yeah, I don't know. I'll ne- I guess I'll never know. I guess we'll never know. Well, it's a, it's an interest as long as you don't have the implant. Although that, that I was thinking about this the other day. It's about the only uh, uh, thing that you could come up in wrestling, a scenario that nobody's tried yet that I know of. Although maybe our next uh, guest, uh, uh, Donnie Brook, might have uh, thought of it. And we'll be back right after our break. With some more wrestling news and more paranormal. Now back to exploring the bizarre with two of the most electrifying researchers in the paranormal. Your hosts, Timothy, Timothy Beckley, Beckley and Tim Swartz. Well, you know, maybe I could sneak out of the ring here without anybody... Uh, Seeing me get back to the safety of the the ah, the, the dressing room. Oh oh oh! <laughs> Our next guest. He he's closing it. He's circling uh, me. No no no, Donnie Donnie, keep keep your distance. I I I I didn't do it. I swear I didn't kick you in the back while your head was turned. No you way. You wouldn't even have a chance. <laughs> you wouldn't oh, even have fun. a chance, pal. This is fun. Let me hey, tell we got you Donnie something. Brook. Donnie Brook with us. Me, Donnie Brook, you you hail from what is it? Uh, Georgia, right? I live in the state of Georgia, boy. I was uh, born in Macon, raised in Augusta. And uh, you start, you know, I I, just, I guess it's only been within maybe the last six months ago or so. I start getting these mysterious emails from someone who had no name really attached to it. Uh, but there were like strange lights in the sky and, and, and other things that were coming in. And it was always signed Donnie, the, uh, I think uh, Donnie booked a wrestler or something. I said, well, you know, man, I want, mm-hmm. I want to do a show. I want to do a show on the, uh, the paranormal and UFOs and, 
uh, wrestlers and in in all of uh, that. And uh, so I um, coerced uh, Donnie uh, into coming onto the uh, uh, program. So Donnie, why don't you you start out and just tell us a little bit about your uh, wrestling uh, career, and then we'll uh, work into the uh, the paranormal as the minutes uh, tick away. Sure thing. Um, got into the wrestling business in 1989, still a senior in high school, and I thought it was one of the coolest things on TV. That and like watching anything related to Elvis. I mean, Elvis was like, he's like the king of rock and roll. You know, he's my favorite mm-hmm. singer. He does no wrong. Um, 1990, I graduated high school, and I actually get trained to referee. And at the time, I was only like 120 pounds. And I started to gain weight. And so my trainer, who was King Harley, now not Harley Race, but King Harley, he did mid-card spots for the WWF and did the regional territories. He did a biker gimmick. So anybody who would watch primetime wrestling on USA Network in 85 and 86 saw him. Um, he would just go in and, and look really good, but always put the big name over. But um, he was my trainer. And I got into. I worked for him here in Georgia, just doing regionals and whatnot. And well, who, just, uh, Donnie, who, who were your, who were, who were your favorite like uh, wrestlers? Uh, like uh, growing up, I remember I was the oh, uh, vice president. I was the vice president. I was the vice president of the Pat O'Connor Fan Club. So, oh uh, yeah, uh, go, yeah. Uh, go ahead. Dick Slater. Yeah, Dicky Slater. Dicky Slater to me was the best pound for in the in the NWA now in the NWA, Dick Slater was. In the WWF, Bret Hart. Mm. Two best. I mean, if you had to pick somebody else other than Bret, definitely Kerr Hennig. I mean, and they're even. They're, they're, not, they're not better than each other. They were equals in my, in my eyes. And Dickie Slater, you, he was unpredictable. So no matter, you saw Dickie Slater every week, but you never knew what he was going to do. So you got something new every week. That's what made him good. And, 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 and I enjoyed watching Dickie Slater. I didn't care if he was a good guy or a bad guy. I wanted him to beat somebody up, and he did. <laughs> so I was happy. Um, but when I was a kid, I always cheered for the bad guy. And all the kids in school went for the good guy. So they always naturally – they didn't hate me, but it was, a, it was a friendly rivalry. You know, so every time the horseman beat up Dusty Rhodes, <laughs> I was the big man on campus. Dusty I told you. Rhodes. I, I have a photo of <laughs> – uh, Vivian, Vivian leading Dusty Rhodes out of the ring, all covered in 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 the blood. Well, at least his forehead, I guess, where maybe he had cut himself or something like. Well, or maybe not. I guess if you get pounded in the same spot, uh, you know, a couple of hundred times, you're more prone to, uh, uh, you know, uh, bleed. But his, the blood was pouring from his uh, forehead, and uh, there's a uh, uh, Vivian leading him, uh, you know, down the aisle back to the. Uh, dressing room so so go oh, yeah. ahead okay so yeah you you kind of like you kind of like the heels you were a, a fan of the oh, uh, absolutely yeah absolutely i mean you know to me even as a kid the, the the heels had all the heat you know because you could go out there and have all these people just hating you that's like, well, they seem to have more heat on them or more focus on them because it seems like to me, whoever walks out next is going to get cheered because they want that person to beat up the big mouth. So that's yeah. why I like the bad guys. That's why I, I did. And well, now, now how, I, okay, let, 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 let us uh, 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 cut the uh, uh, clue in the, um, uh, the uh, neophytes out there in the audience. How much of it is sport? Entertainment, would you say, and how much of it is uh, ath- uh, actually uh, uh, being a, a, a great athlete? Okay, it's it. This is it, and every everybody here in 2018 knows that professional wrestling is entertainment. Everybody knows that, but what they don't need to know, and I'm gonna upset some people, is they don't need to know how we create the magic. And a lot of people are telling people that keep to keep their mouth shut. But I'll say this, the matches are predetermined, but the physicality that, that, that we have to go through to perform just a basic match, most people would cringe at the pain that it will cause. Now, you take somebody that's well-trained, even they can screw up. 
Now, if they screw up in wrestling, either you're going to get hurt or you're going to die. It mm-hmm. will happen. It has happened. And people that say wrestling's fake piss me off. And maybe I shouldn't have said that word because. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This the is, guys, this is, the guys, the take. guys don't it's get okay. yeah, The guys don't get the credit they deserve. And, I, and, and, it, and it ticks me the heck off because when people, when Owen Hart died, people said to me, well, that's part of the show. And I looked at them like they were crazy. I said, that man is dead. He fell from the top of yeah. the Kemper Arena, for God's sakes. How was he going to survive that? And the person felt like it's small, lower than a snake's belly. And I was glad that they did because maybe they need to, people need to wake up that wrestling is entertainment, but there's a sincere danger when you get in them ropes. Well, and you know, one of, my, one of my, one of my, one of my, favorite all-time matches so you talk about falling from a great height was uh cactus jack um oh, mankind yeah. <laughs> fighting fighting a cage a cage match with the undertaker that guy yeah, i don't know if, a, I, I, I guess most of yeah most of our uh, <laughs> listeners i guess if they follow wrestling have seen cage matches i mean it's been on the uh, uh, tv and all they climb to the top of the uh, the cage and Jump, uh, uh, you know, jump down on each other, and occasionally the uh, the uh, the cage will uh, collapse, or the roof will give in. And mankind went from the top of the um, the cage right down onto the announcer's uh, table mm-hmm. and smacked yes, him. What a what a what a match uh, that was! I watched it actually on um, <laughs> YouTube uh, <laughs> recently. Yeah, but I anyway, you, we, I, I remember. Go ahead. Well, no, I, we we want to get into the um, uh, the paranormal and the UFOs. I mean, uh, sure. Uh, that, uh, you sent me these these photographs, which were yes. uh, formations of uh, objects or lights in the uh, in the sky. Mm-hmm. D- tell me a little bit about uh, uh, your UFO activities and, and your research into the topic. Okay. Well, the first of all. Um, one of the photos. I mean, let me touch on that, then I'll tell you about the research aspect. Yeah. This, this is one a, of in the, Augusta, Georgia, right? Yeah, it was actually in a town called Grove Town, which is a part of Augusta. It's kind of like Tucker is to Atlanta. Um, mm-hmm. It's just a little uh, area outside. We all consider it Augusta. It was a triangle, and it was the classic TR3B that you hear about. If you you can Google it, and it's like a triangle. Um, aircraft that belongs to the United States Air Force, which is part of Project Solar Warden, which is President Trump's Space Force he's now talking about. They're finally bringing this to the forefront. Um, I knew about Solar Warden about 10 years ago when Gary McKinnon, um, the story broke, yes. that he hacked mm-hmm. NASA's computers. He was arrested in England, but they dropped the charges. Well, if, the way I see it is if he really... Um, was in trouble if they really wanted to do something to him they could but they dropped the charges and the way i see it is they dropped the charges against him because whatever he found would have been evidence in a trial they didn't want it to come out so what do you do you drop the charges just credit the kid project solar warden you you followed you excuse me the ufo community has known about like i said for at least the past 10 years or more and it's a secret space program you've probably heard it called the secret space program because it's technically top secret. It's starting to be disclosed now. But we have a secret space program that SpaceX and Bigelow Aerospace is working with NASA. Now, here's where the rubber meets the road. It is believed by some, and it has been said by some, that allegedly there is an alien race known as the Nordics that are wrapped up in this. Now, that, now that I don't know. I can only tell you that's what people have been alleging. I want to be clear on that. But it is definitely a secret space program. And when I say secret, it's just not totally disclosed yet. But President Trump is starting towards that. Towards that. Now, yes. the triangle that was over Grovetown is, is the TR-3B. It's a part of that program. It's like a step up from stealth. That's what we believe. Um, and well, it's a I, you know, I, I've, always, I've, always, I've always questioned, though, why would a craft uh, that's part of some secret pro- um, space program appear over a little uh, town like that? I mean, 
what what is the ultimate I'm so goal glad you asked. purpose yes i'm so glad you asked because in society because of hollywood and television if you say the word ufo hypothetically if you and i are sitting at a diner and we're having a conversation i say hey tim i saw a ufo last night somebody in the other booth didn't hear that they heard me say alien spaceship because in society those three letters mean alien but what we have to realize is these days a ufo is just that it means it's something unidentified and if it's unidentified you can't say what the heck it is but you are correct you are correct but i but I will say this, sir, in 1947, when people saw UFOs, we didn't have anything advanced. Those days, it's a, it's a different ball game if you, if you read me. But these days, you can't say what it is. It's either us or them. I think it's a 50-50 proposition, but I don't know, sir. It's, when you're standing on the ground and you see something in the sky you don't understand, it's unidentified. You can't say either way. Somebody knows well, you know, somewhere. Well, you know, I always thought that if you go back and you study the early history of the UFO movement, and we've talked about this on the air, there seemed to be an attempt by the the authorities and the various UFO uh, researchers who were, had their own private organizations to push the extraterrestrial uh, uh, theory, the ETH, mm-hmm. uh, as we uh, as we call it, because they were probably, or at least some of them were trying to divert attention away from what was really happening. Now, my own opinion on this is that a lot of the, uh, like the early UFO crashes and uh, UFO incidents involved uh, craft that were uh, being test flown by either the U.S. uh, government or engineers that had been uh, bought over as a part of Project Paperclip, the uh, uh, the uh, where they were bringing the uh, the scientists and the uh, engineers, a lot of them war criminals, uh, over from uh, Germany to work on uh, the early space program. Well, I think that oh the my early gosh, spo- yes, uh, yes, the, yes. Uh, oh, about, the early the I'm early, the early space <laughs> the the early space program went into two directions. Uh, one followed yes. what was the V two, uh, you know, a, a rocket, the more so mm-hmm. called conventional. Uh, uh, a rocketry program, and then some followed at either anti gravity or uh, some other uh, form of uh, uh, space travel, which we were not informed about that these uh, particular tests were being kept under wraps. And I'm not sure if uh, very many people in the uh, government uh, actually even knew what was. Uh, 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 going on, and it could have also involved uh, some form of uh, uh, time travel. It, it's possible well. that the, uh, <laughs> the the Ger- the Germans uh, discovered the secret to time uh, travel, and you know they were in touch with these uh, what you call Nordic uh, uh, aliens, and they channeled. They were. They were this, uh, th- yes, I'm sorry, but they were yeah, allegedly yeah. alleged. They were allegedly, allegedly in, in, t- in touch with a race of beings known as the Aryans. Now, yeah. now, where have you heard the term Aryan before? You've heard the term Aryan during World War II when right. Hitler wanted to create an Aryan race, remember? Exactly. They were blonde-headed. blonde-headed um, you've, seen, you've probably seen the po- posters. Of the blind-headed male or female oh, yeah. well, body, well, sure. you know what I'm saying? They, well, that's where he got that from, allegedly. Now, you're talking about Roswell, the most famous UFO case in our country, and everyone has said, "Oh my goodness, it's a weather balloon." They proved it's a weather balloon. But that's bull. A lot of people don't really know what how things went down in Roswell, as far as Major Jesse Marcel is concerned. And Major Marcel, when he was called to the sheriff's office to look at some debris that a gentleman named Mac Braswell, Brazel took to the sheriff's office, Major Marcel, right then, was not looking at a weather balloon. He was looking at metal. So this crap about it being a, a weather balloon is bull. Okay. So when Major Marcel goes out and he sees all this metal across this man's field, he obviously sees it's not a weather balloon. 
Major Marcel even said right before he passed, he was a part of the cover up, but he was forced into it. You know, so so what were the so what, what was it? Well, on July the fourth in Roswell, there was a major electrical storm, very very bad thunderstorm. Now, July the fourth is a federal holiday; it's Independence Day. So it's a holiday. They wouldn't have been testing anything on July the fourth, number one, and number two in the weather conditions. We wouldn't have been testing nothing. So. It wasn't ours, but that disqualifies us. So who could it belong to? There you go. I know what you're saying. Well, I, I would al I would also yeah. say that if there was still a Nazi uh, influence, that they would pick July fourth uh, as a uh, 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 as a date to send up a a device uh, such as this to prove that they were uh, still. Uh, mighty and and uh, and and strong and, and ahead of us in the uh, in the space department. I mean, it's just it's just it's just a theory, an idea, but it seems to uh, right. it seems to tie in. If now, it, uh, Donnie, have you ever had any, and any sightings of your own? Oh yeah, yeah, I had one um, here just here just recently, and I believe I forwarded you the picture. We had a full moon here in town, and there was a round dot below it and i didn't know what it was so i took a picture of it and i'm theorizing it was nibiru but i mean honestly i don't know because when i was out i saw the planet venus towards the right and towards the left is where the full moon was and then there was that round dot and i'm thinking okay stars are not that dull so what the heck is that it's got to be something there's something up there but i don't know what you know it's technically what, was, it move, was it was it was it moving moving or circling about no or anything? no no sir no sir it was stationary it was stationary and I stared at it, and I'm like, well, stars are usually brighter than that. So let me snap a picture of it, you know. Um, and still to this moment, I don't know what it was. I mean, and I may never know, but it's just something that was up there that was ident unidentified. And um, the, all of the other UFO sightings around here that have been reported to me, except for the two pictures I sent you of the, round, of the oval craft with the contrail coming out the back during the day. And the like, the diamond shaped at night. I, I witnessed those two. They were right here over Augusta. I'm like, and, and and YouTube has videos of other people that I've never met that are posting stuff about Augusta and their videos. And I've seen them. And one is on Broad Street. And I can't remember the year. It was somewhere in like the 90s, I think. And it was like seven or eight orbs of light. And I'm like, okay, I know where that, I know where they took that video. But wow, I didn't know about that event. So, um, now, did, 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 do, you, do you know uh, where any of these reports, uh, uh, did they get any uh, uh, paper, uh, news, uh, paper attaching anything in the media, radio, TV, yeah, uh, press? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the um, the sighting from September of 2017, I was on the local news here in reference to it. And you were? Website. Yes, I was. And I had yeah. the link to yeah, it. I'll okay. forward it to you tomorrow. And. Uh -huh. The several websites on the internet picked up the story and did their own story about it. You know, latestufos.com uh, and George Filer and all these other folks did. Oh, George, and I yeah. think because it, yeah, because it was a classic triangle and it was the classic TR3B. And once again, Solar Warden is going to pop up. I think that's why they didn't. And that's such an obvious that if that's what it is, because it's got four lights on it, it's got three, got one on each end, which is three, and then the one in the middle. And if you look at the and, 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 and normally, and normally very silent. Oh, very silent because the anti gravity can hover. That's what the anti gravity label do um, in comparison to a helicopter. That's how you know it's not a helicopter because you don't hear it. Um, the anti gravity makes it move really, really slow or still. And that's what you, you were you were trying it. to explain. You were trying to explain why you thought, though, that they might be uh, testing it over at, at, at small communities like this. Oh yeah, absolutely. Now you take a TR three B. It's flying over a small area, a small community. Okay, it's a reconnaissance vehicle. It means they're 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 patrolling or looking for something. That's what I get from that. So I'm thinking the TR three B. If it's flying over now, these have been seen all over the United States, but they're flying over a small community. Why would they? Are they patrolling because the police departments can't? Well, I don't think that's it. I think the NSA is tied up in it. And what I think is what they're doing is there is a technology aboard these craft 
they can tell what you're talk who you're talking to on this on your cell phone on your computer. They have a way to Edward Snowden, it, if you will, to spy. Mm -hmm. Now, here's my thing: if they're doing it for the good of the country, I hate to say it, but with terrorism, maybe they have to do the extreme to protect the country. But I think that's what's going on. Of course, I don't know, but I mean that's just a thought. Because why would they be a very small community unless they're just trying to drum up a UFO report, knowing that people are going to think a UFO is alien? You know what I mean? So yeah, I, I don't think there, I don't I think, think there are many yet. I, I don't think there are many terrorists in your neck of the uh, uh, the woods. <laughs> now, I I have heard of some uh, cases uh, from people that live down along the um, uh, the Mexican border and into Arizona that they have had. Uh, what what have been described uh, is more like dirigible uh, type of uh, mm -hmm. crafts that um, uh, hover up above, uh, keeping uh, tabs on uh, smugglers and drug dealers and all. But mm -hmm. I, I mean, I hate to say this, but I don't think that stops anybody because they're digging they're digging tunnels if they can't get through uh, uh, by any other uh, uh, means. I mean, the only you, way to you're prevent correct. The only way to prevent a drug trafficking is to make as much of it as possible uh, legal and let the people decide what the heck it is they want to do, you know, themselves. I, I, of, I totally yeah. agree. I totally yeah. agree. And, and, and not to touch on anything that the president's doing now, but he mentions building a wall. With all due respect to that idea, if you build a wall, that's not going to keep people out. They're going to find no, out. I mean, absolutely not. You know, and if you spent that, yeah, if you I took that money, if you took that money and spent it on, uh, something uh, you know that was worthwhile to uh, humanity, <laughs> mm -hmm. then it would be it, it would be something yeah. positive. You know, you gotta you I gotta put, yeah yeah that's what I'm, yeah that's what I mean. I mean yeah, that's what I but, mean. Like 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 if his theory, if you keep if you build a wall, you'll keep people in or out. That's that's not going to stop folks. Somehow they're going to find a way. So it's not really yeah, worth to get it. Doing. To get you got to find another I way. I agree with you. Yeah, they got air. People have airplanes, and they got. Uh, yeah. And if the, if the Japanese could send over the so-called the um, uh, the balloons, uh, that mm -hmm. may or may not have been responsible for some of the UFO scares, uh, uh, you know, during the end, latter part of the war, they could certainly send. I mean, you know, like and drones. Everybody has a drone uh, today. I'm the only person that doesn't have a drone. I think. I anyway, we're we're going. <laughs> we're at the halfway point, and we'll be back in a few minutes with more of. Uh, Exploring the bizarre and perhaps like, yeah. Exploring the bizarre. bizarre. Your e-ticket ride into the world of the paranormal. Strap yourself in as we traverse the universe exploring the unexplained UFOs. UFOs. Ghosts, Ghosts, Lost Worlds, world, Cryptozoology, world, as well as other dimensions. dimensions. It's time to take back the night. Back the night. Back. Now, your electrifying hosts of Exploring the Bazaar, Timothy Beckley and Tim Swartz. I, I swear, they're, uh, I turn my back and they're trying to, to, to sucker punch me. These, these guests tonight, they're... They're not not to, not to be uh, trusted. I I don't know who I could could use for a, a tag team uh, a partner uh, uh, here. Mankind is uh, retired, and and uh, Steve Austin is too busy doing movies. I, I my goodness, I guess I'm going to have to take on everybody by myself. But then I'm such an athletic type and uh, a weightlifter and a bodybuilder. Uh, yeah, sure. I, how can I fool that? Uh, anyway, we're back with our guest, and it's pro wrestling uh, night. So be prepared to be thrown over the paranormal ropes. And we have a question from Bambi in chat. She wants to know, has anyone here been in touch with Vivian since she passed away? And you know something, Bambi? Yes. The answer is at least I believe yes. And it happened just today. Now, 
Anybody who listens to Exploring the Bazaar on KCOR Radio or watches our YouTube show on Mr. UFO Secret Files will know that I have had more synchronicities in my life than the king of Egypt. I don't know. Let's just pick uh, uh, someplace at, uh, at uh, random. In fact, uh, there is a 450-page book out that I wrote. It's the Matrix of Philip K. Dick and the Synchronicities of Tim Beckley. And I'm not just talking about people calling, uh, you know, like uh, uh, you're thinking of somebody and they call on the telephone the next day. Uh, that's That to me is not even worth, worthy of a mention. Those that have heard me on this program or other programs know that some of these synchronicities are just totally out of control. Well, I've got a synchronicity for you that is totally out of control. And I do believe uh, a peruser is evidential, uh, uh, evidential that uh, Vivian or our lady Suzanne may be listening to the program tonight. Uh, uh, these synchronicities, you know, I haven't had one in a while. And I was just thinking last night, I said to myself, where have all the synchronicities uh, gone? It's been, oh, maybe two or three months since uh, something uh, some coincidence has happened that is beyond the uh, the uh, pale. Well, today I had a, a doctor's uh, appointment at the NYU uh, hospital, and um, I printed out the uh, appointment uh, a sheet that tells you who you're going to see and what building you, you have to go to in the office and so forth. Now, I've only been to see this doctor uh, one time, and I know her by her. Uh, last name. I never knew what her first name was, and I didn't really in, in inquire, and it wasn't important. Well, I print this out on my a little uh, uh, Hewlett Packard printer here, and in bold type, it says across the top of the page, follow up appointment with Vivian, dot, dot, dot. Well, if tonight is not a follow up appointment with Vivian, I don't know what is. So I, I do believe that there is a good chance that she might be listening uh, to the program. And since she was a Luciferian, perhaps we should all be on our worst behavior. The heel will, ri the heel will rise to the top uh, this evening. Uh, anyway, this is, a, this is a great show and one that I've uh, looked forward to uh, doing for a, a long time. You know, we mix the parent... The paranormal in UFOs is something that anybody can be into. It crosses uh, all kind of demographics. I mean, rich people, poor people, famous people, your average guy in the street. It doesn't matter whether they live in, in Phoenix, Arizona, or Timbuktu. There are UFOs out there, and the people are having a strange experiences all the time. Uh, anyway, that's my synchronicity with... Um, uh, concerning um, Vivian, and uh, both of our guests wanted to know if uh, Bambi there in the chat room was the famous wrestler of the same name. So perhaps yeah, chat really back curious. if that's yeah yeah possibly it is, and so chat back to that effect. Everybody back to their corner because we're on our last break, and we'll be back in just a few minutes with uh, more of exploring the bazaar. Back to exploring the bazaar with two of the most electrifying researchers in the paranormal. Your hosts, Timothy, Timothy Beckley, Beckley and Tim Swiss. Oh my goodness. A real tag, a real tag team I went. night here. In the, uh, in the, in the, in the Tim, wrestling Tim, arena. Tim, Tim, can I chime in and say something? Well, Donnie, I've got my hand, yes. I've got my, I've got my hand raised, brother. I swear to God I did. <laughs> okay. Are you with, are you the referee? You, hell no, I ain't no damn referee. I don't referee. Well, yeah. with 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 you and your other partner Tim having your show, and I know that Tim's on here and there's a co-host. Your show, you know, you guys are TNT. There's been a hell of a lot of dynamite on this show tonight. Oh yeah. And you, you, you UFOs is such a and a better topic, and especially with what the UFO. <laughs> 
subject how it killed John Kennedy. And that's a subject a lot of people don't either know well, about or don't talk about. Okay, now you say that U UFOs were responsible for killing Kennedy? The subject. The subject of the UFO. Okay, the well, well, well explain, explain to the okay. uh, listeners how that is, yeah. Okay, well, in 1947, we all know that the Roswell event happened, okay? And what some people may not realize, and I have the documents, and if someone reaches out to me, I'm happy to forward them to them, but there was a group known, um, appointed by Harry Truman, President Truman, a group called MJ-12, uh -huh. Majestic 12. The Majestic 12 group was put in order, and I'm trying to think about the best way to say this. They were in charge of all of the UFO and slash alien intel that our country collected. Now, basically what that meant was if we had technologies that were advanced, they were in charge of getting them figured out, basically, if they, we were going to use their, that technology, which we have been back engineering, and that's why we got Project Solar Warden today, but that's, we don't have time to get into how. But John Kennedy so I had a UFO sighting. Uh, when he was in Hyannisport, he was on his boat, and the story goes that he saw the UFO when he was with Mrs. Kennedy and some other individuals, I'm sure Secret Service and staff members, but he basically told everyone, keep your mouth shut, we didn't see anything, and then JFK started looking into the UFO thing, the subject, and he sent a letter to the CIA requesting information. Now, if you know anything about JFK, basically you know you should know that his Secret Service code name was Lancer, and there's a document that it exists that people say is is fake, but I think it's real. It's giving basically giving the order to assassinate John Kennedy because he wanted to share, or it's believed that he wanted to share intel with the Russians, and that's something that evidently they couldn't let out so evidently that tells me there's something so sensitive tied up with the ufo subject that they were willing to kill the president and tim i think i forwarded you forwarded you those documents if not i will um but that's where it started now lyndon johnson like i said he did benefit from it but it all started with mj12 so the subject matter is tied up in the kennedy assassination no, what what is tied up? The subject, the, the subject? of the UFOs. The I subject, okay. yes. Well, well, we know, we know that uh, his brother Robert uh, Kennedy was uh, uh, very much interested in the subject. In fact, uh, I have in my files a letter that he wrote to uh, my first uh, publisher, actually Gray Barker, who uh, wrote the book mm -hmm. they knew about flying saucers. About the it was the original Men in Black uh, story and. Um, Robert Kennedy uh, uh, said in this letter to Gray that he was very much interested in UFOs and extraterrestrials and, and so forth, and that he was a card-carrying member of the Amalgamated Flying Saucer Clubs of America. Now, AFCA, Amalgamated Flying Saucer Club, uh, Gabriel Green was the president of that uh, particular uh, group. Uh, he lived down in... Uh, Joshua Tree in California near the uh, desert, and actually ran uh, against uh, Robert Kennedy for uh, the Senate seat in um, California on the space program ticket or something to that effect. And he actually got about 175,000 uh, votes. So uh, he did. He he was a figure to uh, contend with, and uh, not only uh, did he uh, run uh, this uh, UFO uh, group, but he claimed to have had UFO contacts uh, uh, him himself. Uh, of course, now uh, a lot of pr presidents, uh, uh, Donnie and our other guests as well, uh, have had some, perhaps a little bit of shady dealings uh, with the, uh, some a little bit uh, more forthright than others with the UFO uh, uh, subject. Um, mm -hmm. Jimmy Carter, uh, of course, had a sighting down in, uh, down in Georgia. Plains, Georgia. Uh, yeah, yeah. In fact, it's very interesting. You know, we hear about his report. I think they were outside of the uh, 
uh, Alliance Club meeting, uh, the hall or something that night, and they yep. uh, pointed at these uh, couple of objects in the sky, and uh, Jimmy admitted that he had no explanation for them. Well, later on, the uh, the hardcore skeptics came out and said, well, they were nothing more than the, the planet Venus or some other stars and so forth. Well, I did a little bit of checking, uh, uh, Donnie, on this, and it turns out that there had been other sightings uh, in this uh, particular, uh, pl was it Plains? Plains, Georgia? Plains, Plains, yes. Sir. Yeah, Plains, Georgia. There had been other sightings uh, uh, there around the same time, maybe a, a few days or a week uh, in advance, uh, including an object, I guess, that had been seen uh, to have uh, uh, landed uh, somewhere outside of, uh, of town. So uh, this would seem to add a little bit of uh, weight to... Uh, uh, Carter's uh, uh, sighting uh, and it being a little bit more than uh, the planet of Venus, perhaps. And uh, another time, he was in the uh, in Panama, and he was taken taking off after uh, uh, some sort of of meeting uh, there. And he's in his helicopter, and not too far away from the helicopter is a UFO in the sky. And now. The photograph, uh, and I talked to the lady who, who took it, uh, I don't remember her name or anything, although it's detailed in one of my uh, uh, special reports, um, sent a copy, I, I guess, to, uh, to uh, uh, Carter to see if maybe he'd seen anything or would verify it. And I don't think he ever got back to her outside of maybe uh, thanking her for the photograph, but the picture is in the Carter uh, library with, I don't think, any... Uh, explanation uh, for it. It just says simply, uh, uh, you know, uh, UFOs. Now, I got mixed up in a, um, a, a presidential UFO uh, situation just uh, recently. There is a uh, magazine out of England called 14 Times, uh, named after yep, the, uh, yeah, the great uh, uh, Charles Ford, who was the grandfather of the uh, supernatural and the paranormal. He spent most of his life in the uh, library uh, going through uh, scientific papers and old uh, the news clippings, uh, getting uh, UFO stories and, and just odd things, uh, odd falls of uh, objects from the sky, such as ice and fish and frogs and uh, God knows uh, 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 what else. Uh, anyway, the 14 times this British magazine is named after him. Well, there's a story in the current issue on the cover is a very colorful um adaptation painting of Richard Nixon and the great uh, comedian Jackie Gleason, who of course is oh, star. I know this story. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, starred in the <laughs> uh, uh, the TV series The Honeymooner, and 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 the story goes, which uh, somehow I'm getting getting uh, credit for, as if I had made it up myself and was promoting it. I simply just, uh, you know, uh, I came up with the, the sources and what other people told me and, and quoted them uh, accordingly. That uh, one night, Jackie Gleason, after they had, he had played uh, uh, 18 holes of golf with uh, President Nixon, apparently they were uh, golfing uh, buddies, uh, Nixon showed up at his home one night, knocked on the door like at midnight, took him out to uh, uh, the uh, local Air Force base, which I think is uh, uh, Andrews there in Florida. Yeah. They passed the security Miami. guards. Yeah, before they they passed the security guards because they uh, recognized the uh, the president, which I kind of find difficult to believe, but that's the the story. And um, Nixon, uh, according to this uh, account, told by Jackie Gleason's ex wife, by the way, uh, was taken to a back hangar and escorted inside by the president and taken over to a uh, a deep freezer of some sort. Opened it up. And there inside was at least one, if not more, uh, alien uh, bodies, supposedly from Roswell or from some other UFO uh, uh, crash. Well, the story has been repeated many times. It's all over the uh, uh, Internet. There's, there's no real way of um, uh, proving it or disproving it. Uh, Jackie Gleason, of course, is long uh, deceased. And um, Richard uh, Nixon, of course, is no longer with us uh, either. And uh, whatever Nixon said towards the latter days uh, of his life, I don't know if anybody would accept it uh, or not. But there are a lot of celebrities who have had uh, UFO experiences. And Jackie Gleason was a big fan of the subject. 
Uh, he used to appear as a uh, guest in the wee hours uh, on WR Radio in New York on the Long John Neville Show. And he has quite a uh, paranormal uh, collection. In fact, as a youth, he ordered some of my first uh, books, sent me a check on his, in his letterhead and so forth. Uh, and uh, has a uh, quite a collection that you can find in the University of Miami of well over a thousand books and personal papers on the uh, on the subject. So, uh, people from all walks of life, uh, presidents and non presidents, and uh, uh, and entertainers have had uh, UFO experiences. No doubt uh, about it. Now, no, this, no, this yeah. is Donnie. Um, you're talking uh, about. Okay. President so, okay. Nixon, you're talking about yes. President Nixon. Are you aware of the story of Valiant Thor? Oh, oh yeah. of course. Uh, my uh, uh, okay. Frank Strange. Nixon was, was, a, was yeah. A Nixon, good, was a good yeah. friend of mine. Yeah, Nixon was the vice president when Valiant showed up. Mm -hmm. So Nixon got into this subject early as the vice president. So Nixon well, did a lot. In that's a, that's according that's according to the story. Again, uh, we lack sure, any yeah, yeah, and that's all we can go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, although there recently, I guess you know who Linda Moulton Howe is. There, there's a Absolutely, story that yes. she told. Yeah, yeah. There's a story that she told on her, um, oh, maybe on Coast to Coast about how Nixon ha actually had written a letter and and stuffed it away somewhere in the um, a White House. And, and that supposedly at some future date, something to do with the passing, I think, of Henry Kessinger. But I, I don't have the story, uh, you know, uh, down mm -hmm. the path. Supposedly, the, somebody will find the letter and will reveal that it deals with uh, an alien, uh, you know, in, invasion or, or something. I mean, do you, do you think if there are, uh, Donnie, if there are aliens here that they're, uh, that they're hostile or friendly or... No. Well, first things first, everybody talks about it, some kind of alien invasion because they're looking at the movie. Well, let me tell you this. It's already happened, in my opinion, and this is what I mean. When President Eisenhower met with some alleged, let me make sure I say this word clearly, alleged beings at Holloman Air Force Base, the treaty was made right then that mm -hmm. Eisenhower would – Give them something for technology. Help with technology. And that's when the abductions phenomena started. So you have to gather that that's what he promised them. Now, why? I don't know. Of course, I don't know. But there's no way for me to go back in time because I can't time travel and find out what's going on. But that's the story that Laura Eisenhower is telling. Well, I, so, you know. I, I hate what, to say this, in, but I, I don't even know. I don't even know for a fact that Laura is really re, uh, related to President Eisenhower. I don't know mm -hmm. if that has actually been uh, substantiated. But you know, I did want to mention that uh, Vivian uh, and I uh, we went a couple of times to like, um, oh, I think St. Martin's and uh, help me out here, St. What's the other island down there? This uh, Americans, uh, Virgin Islands. Well, of course, smack me in the mm -hmm. face here. Don't you dare! <laughs> but uh, a couple of times, and we would we would spend a, you know like a couple of hours on the beach at night, looking up in the sky. Oh, and we also went to the um, Chichen Itza. Uh, uh, for they have a light and sound show, and uh, of course they've had a lot of UFO sightings over over uh, there. You know. She was uh, fascinated in the subject, but not so much as uh, with her, her magic and all. And she kept, uh, you know, she did keep a diary uh, at that of, uh, of a, a lot of her uh, experiences and stuff. Did, did you ever uh, come across that or see any of her other papers that she might have had? No, actually, I haven't even, I didn't even know she had that. I knew that she liked to write poems. Yeah. She, she, she loved poetry, but I, I didn't know about this diary. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, well, I, I don't, you know, it was kind of a sporadic uh, thing. I, I would, um, uh, I think to some, uh, you know, uh, uh, ex extent, uh, you know, I, I looked at it a, a, a few times, but I, and she would try to explain it to me, but she was much more into the, ma you know, the magical uh, aspects of this than, uh, uh, than I, uh, I was, I kind of, fo uh, kind of found it difficult to, uh, uh, follow a lot of the rituals and things, uh, uh, you know, uh, like that. Yeah. And uh, she did work. She did work at uh, 
uh, a um, a psychic center and a bookstore. Yes. Uh, New Age books and and things. And I remember uh, there's actually an article that I wrote. Uh, There was a guy who came into uh, Fort Lauderdale who um, had a uh, some kind of uh, light and sound uh, show that was self-contained. And you put this uh, headset on and apparently uh, it would alter your your uh, con- uh, consciousness. Oh, wow. uh, I mean, I, tr- I tried it and I didn't quite get the um, uh, any great sensation uh, out of it. Sort of a, a flotation tank, uh, you know, without the uh, oh, yeah. flotation, yeah. Yeah, flotation uh, device. But I, I remember that uh, uh, Viv uh, didn't. Uh, uh, you know, she couldn't. She couldn't get a uh, uh, enough of it. Well, I think she was very sensitized. Uh, I guess as a lot of psychics would be to uh, uh, mm-hmm. to the other, you know, to the other uh, senses. Maybe more so uh, than a lot of people, including myself, uh, uh, might uh, might be. You know. Yeah. So what 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 did she? I mean, towards like somehow I uh, like I say I talked to her on the telephone towards the. Uh, uh, the end there, but she was very, very uh, ill, and we didn't uh, yeah. uh, we didn't really talk all that uh, uh, much. I mean, what what was her general feeling about the you know the the fact that she she must have known that she was getting ill? Yes. Oh, yeah. She knew. She knew. And actually, there was one um, one time that she told me um, that she actually had passed, and this was a uh, rather remarkable. I thought uh, hearing it from Vivian. She said that she passed away, but there was nothing there. She crossed the other side, and this was coming from her. Um, she didn't see anything. She said, you got to give me something. You got to give me something or else I'm not going to go. And so she brought herself back to life because when she crossed over, she got nothing. And mm-hmm. she was telling me the story, and I thought, wow. You know, I don't I don't know whether to believe her, but it was real when she was telling me about it. It it felt like she had a real experience. And and and, and that was one of the things that that really um, that really stayed with me from from when she shared it. Well, it it seems from that that printed memo that I got uh, uh, today, follow up appointment with Vivian. You know, it's always the, it's always the subtle things that seem to uh, to point in this uh, you know the direction of uh, there's either a parallel universe or a, uh, a simulated uh, or a reality. I mean, Philip K. Dick, who I uh, wrote a book about recently, including my own synchronicities, was mm. a big believer in parallel universes and the fact that we were all part of the real matrix that this is all a computer uh, simulation. I and, you know, it, it, well, it sounds totally bizarre, but when you think about it, uh, you mm-hmm. know, it seems like we are getting closer and closer to developing, uh, you know, uh, computers and robotics to the point where we may be able to create a, uh, a universe uh, out sure. there. Sure. And it, 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 could, it could be, uh, uh, Donnie, that uh, these uh, craft are, are vehicles from this parallel universe or from this uh, matrix and they realize what we are doing, and I don't know whether they want to help us or, or hinder us or mm-hmm. maybe have no regard for us uh, uh, what, uh, whatsoever. But I, I did have, I remember, another uh, paranormal experience with Vivian. I, I met her mother a few times, a very charming uh, uh, lady. And we were in, um, uh, I guess, the house. You know, it, it was a house, uh, the uh, apartment there uh, that was, uh, I guess, uh, given to her, inherited by, from her mother. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, we were just uh, talking I didn't, in, in uh, the, uh, the subject of her, uh, uh, Suzanne's, uh, uh, dad, uh, uh, came up and I don't remember even in what the context. And I began just singing like dumb me singing a song out of uh, nowhere or humming a few bars or like, I can't sing really, but humming a few bars of the, um, uh, of some uh, song. Can't remember what it is offhand. And her mother looked uh, very uh, aghast at me because it turns out that it was her husband's favorite song. Oh, wow. So, okay, well, it's these little things that seem to count. Now, I was in the hospital uh, uh, to get a um, pacemaker. I was having trouble breathing and, uh, you know, things were going uh, uh, south, uh, so to speak. 
And I had never been in this particular uh, hospital before. In fact, I haven't gotten to the hospital in ages. And um, doctor comes out of me, uh, comes up to me. I had no idea who he was. And he said, oh, are you Timothy Green? And I looked at him and I said, well, how do you know what my middle name is? Because it was nothing, not on my charts, nothing in the hospital records. Only my mother called, my mother and my sister called me Timmy Green. Mm. So I thought to myself, well, this has got to be a message, uh, you know, from either my mom or my sister uh, telling me not to be a frightened or telling me to be, uh, you know, deadly aware. I don't know. You could take it uh, either way, I suppose. And uh, the doctor not uh, being high on the consciousness, uh, uh, cosmic consciousness level looks at me and said, oh, that must have been the name of a doctor I was talking down, uh, talking to at the other end of the room. Well, that's preposterous. <laughs> that's as preposterous as some of the UFO uh, explanations that we hear. Anyway, you know, we are coming up on the end of this uh, star-studded program. And Ooh. I want to give yeah. each of our guests the opportunity to tell us where um, – the audience, uh, the listeners might be able to get in touch with them. Uh, and, and so, uh, Tati Vick, why don't you tell us uh, what you're planning for the very near future? And uh, I know you have some uh, uh, matches on uh, YouTube. Yeah, and uh, and your listeners can actually follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, at Tati Vick the Gamer. So, mm -hmm. you know, go ahead, take a follow, take a look. Uh, get to know who I am before you have an opinion about me, and I will leave it at that. <laughs> everybody, everybody, back to their corner. And and Donnie, what a what what a pleasure. Uh, any uh, anything our listeners should know how to get in touch with you or to uh, yeah they find yeah, you on they can just no I'm not on there anymore. We didn't get into why I'm not on there, but it, I think Big Brother's been watching me. But um, well, Big Brother, the, Big on, Brother watches, on YouTube, Big Brother watches everybody, man. Yeah, um, my YouTube page um, has all my info, but in case they can't get to it, they can reach me at donnybrook at mail.com. All right, Donnie, and we will have both of you back on. And Vivian, love you out there, and uh, do, stay in, <laughs> do, do stay in touch. Uh, anyway, I want to thank all our the, the friends and associates here, Tina, the producer and engineer, Peter Bernard, Carol Rodriguez, and our many, many listeners in the four corners of the world and the wrestling ring. You've been listening to Exploring the Bazaar with hosts Timothy Beckley and Tim Swartz. They're taking back the night by jetting non-stop across the cosmos in search of the truly bizarre and totally unexplained with you as their co pilot Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern, on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. For more information on exploring the bazaar and hosts Timothy Beckley and Tim Swartz, check out their KCOR Digital Radio Network page. Follow their YouTube channel at MRUFO1100. Exploring the bazaar.